Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 22 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 10 today for the British Grand Prix in Season 1. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Canadian Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, because that could be a very crucial race for this turn in this championship, as we had, well, the championship leaders... Ferrari, both of them having a bit of a mare in the race. Leclerc being the main culprit, having a bit of a mare in qualifying, crashing into the wall of champions. Both Ferraris knocked out in Q1. And quite an extraordinary race in Montreal, which saw Lewis Hamilton winning again in Formula 1. Back-to-back -back victories for the Silver Arrows from Russell's win in Baku to Canada. Quite fitting that Hamilton wins in this 2022 Mercedes car at Canada, the place where he won his first ever Formula 1 race. For us, it was another P10, so if anything, we're consistent there, but you can kind of see the pattern there from our results. Ever since Imola, we've had a bit of a back down to reality drop, and we've been getting slower as we've been going on through, because we've gone from P8, P9, P8 to two P10s. You know, now, really, we're having to do a perfect race, execution, get a bit lucky with crashes, safety cars, and whatever, just to get one championship point because it is getting difficult. We're in a bit of a holding pattern right now because we're kind of winding up a lot of these upgrades that are going to come in for this episode, for next episode as well. So, you know, we're just waiting for those upgrades to come in, but they're trickling in quite slowly because they do take a lot of time to actually come in, especially if they're major upgrades. So let's say the chassis side of things, for example. But one area that we can kind of dive into straight away is the HQ facilities because we can make an upgrade. We've got over $3 million now I think for the first time ever in this series. So I have my eye on that activities management one in marketing and then also the fabrication for the power unit because I feel like now I'm wanting to make ERS upgrades and fuel upgrades and engine power upgrades and we need the simultaneous development. So we're going to go ahead and purchase that first of all. So that will be level one, spec one on the fabrication. And so that will mean that every single department of you know aero, engine and chassis, we all have at least two simultaneous upgrades that will be able to be made going forwards once this uh, facility has been built. So now I want to pause it there and look towards, you know, trying to generate some more R&D, generate some more income with the acclaim level. So that's going to be me saving up a little bit for the marketing upgrade because I think, I, I think we're ready. I think it's time to delve into the marketing upgrades and try and boost the acclaim rate a little bit more in the activities we're doing. We do have finally that major weight reduction upgrade that comes in on the engine cover. That took a while because it did fail, remember. We had to repurchase it. So also to be fair, the failure of that has slowed things down a little bit. So that might be a massive reason as well, also why we've plateaued a bit and having to really struggle for P10 in the last two races and, you know, have some perfect, like I said, races and some crazy ones just to get one championship point because we missed out on the weight reduction upgrade. I thought that was going to come in for Baku. It came in after that and Canada in time for the home Grand Prix at least. But you can see here I, I'm you know very keen on upgrading the fuel uh, and maybe the ERS but we've already got an engine power upgrade uh, pending so until the simultaneous upgrade uh, you know fabrication part of the HQ comes in we can't do any further on the power unit and I don't really fancy doing anything quite yet on chassis and aero unless we have enough R&D points to buy the front aero package because we've got two aero packages on rear we've only got one on front eventually as we go through the activity timeline we'll earn enough R&D to get that so there you go that's why we bought that second one so once that comes in we'll have a nice equal balance between the front and the rear of the car of two air upgrades uh, either side basically and now we choose our new rival so we did win our rivalry in game against Daniel Ricciardo and now it's who do we consider to be a rival next now we begin in Sergio Perez because I'm actually beating him in the drivers championship somehow uh, still he's had some uh, torrid luck in terms of uh, you know failures or just poor poor strategies and whatever but that would just be silly to choose we're going to choose Lando Norris then you know he has beaten us in a fair few races but equally I've got a better chance of 
are maybe beating him than Sergio Perez. And then, before we get into the race weekend with our Pirelli hot lap, I actually went ahead and spent some money on my driver perks. Now, these are tucked away in the menu, in the contract uh, part of the menu, but I'm going to boost the R&D resource boost perk by two levels. Now, that's going to mean me earn R&D at a quicker rate in practice programs, I'm hoping, or just through the race weekends as well. And I'm hoping that's going to, you know, just allow us to build a little bit quicker, build the car up quicker. Now, I know I wanted to spend money on the marketing uh, department, and that cost 1.5 million, and, we've already, and we just brought down our budget to half a million, effectively. But as I was going through the menus, I already thought about it, and I think we need R&D actually more right now than more acclaim. We're actually earning money at an okay rate now, I feel, with the two sponsors that we've got. Um, before, with one sponsor, is very difficult, but with two sponsors, I think you saw at Canada, we earned quite a, a significant significant amount in one race weekend so I'm happy with that so we spent a bit of money there in that department and I'm hoping we see the benefits of that straight away and going forward for the rest of the season that's a permanent perk that I now have for the entire career mode so that will pretty much you know help us out for every single you know race and season um, that we do now on this game basically um, and we're gonna just have to wait one more episode maybe to purchase a marketing upgrade for the first time but as I've been talking about that we began our Pirelli hot lamp autocross challenge here at Silverstone and um, I've got to say autocross is definitely my favorite challenge of all the Pirelli hot laps because uh, as I said in Canada there's just that kind of pressure of having to get it all right in one go you know not tapping the cones or whatever and at times the the gates are set out so trickily where you have to really slam on the brakes, you know, get the nose turned in in first gear. And then this was even more tricky because it was in the wet around Silverstone. So there was a bit of, you know, rear end sliding and there was a bit of an art to drifting the car a, li a little bit just to get the car rotated basically for each gate. But just like in Canada, as we get went on through the challenge, you can see the time is a 155. So it's a long old challenge, this one, compared to maybe the one we did at Spain, which was, I think, 128 or 132 uh, full time target to get the gold. Um, so this is a long old one because we started, you know, at Village and we're going to get through into Magnus and Beckett's pretty much. And so we're going to, as we finish off, you're going to see it gets very, very close to some of these cones there. Drifting through into Cops, easy does it in third gear, then plotting the power. And this is the home stretch, I think. But uh, it was pretty damn fine on some of those ones. But we do get the gold. We do get some extra acclaim and 100k in cash. Going through the practice programs then. Next up on Friday in quick practice, 540 points earned. Drogovic earned zero. But so I don't know what went on there. I'm really hoping... That's not a glitch with me purchasing the resource perks, or maybe how maybe that's how it works. Like when you get those perks, your teammate earns less because then it'd be too overpowered. I don't know, but I noticed he earned zero. I'm really hoping he at least can earn like a couple of you know 120, like he was in previous episodes, to add to my like 550. Because you know I, the reason I bought that perk, those two levels of perks, was not to lose him earning R&D as well. I wanted that to be on top of that, so that was a bit weird. I'm hoping that's just a one-off, basically, but we now have enough R&D to purchase. Well, we, we got a fuel upgrade, I think that was, and that'll help us start the race with lower fuel once that comes in, and that'll ultimately make our car a bit lighter, a bit more nimble in the opening laps, and then we go for another minor tyre upgrade, because, you know, the, the meta seems to be now in F122, uh, you know, all one-stop races, pretty much, with the AI, my, you know, myself, with a free choice of tyre, medium to hard, so it makes sense to actually upgrade the tyre as much as you can because it just means you can push even harder, go further into the race on that medium compound, use the hard tyre less maybe as we go on through the season as we bring further upgrades on the tyre wear potentially and that one comes in. But now we delve into qualifying for the British Grand Prix. Not only my home GP as a driver but also the teams obviously uh, being a British racing team. So I'm hoping we can do well. Yeah, Silverstone, I've got a weird relationship with it. F1 2020, it was definitely a bogey circuit for me. 2021, we had a few bit of, you know, hints of success. You know, this uh, this was actually the place where quite a few times this was our first race to win ever in the later seasons of F1 2021 career mode. So let's see how it goes on F1 22. Drifting and kind of having to control the car across the lines. We lose the back end, pushing hard. But at the moment, we're in P9 on that first run. 
Drogovic up in P7, so he's gone quicker than me. And we're both inside the top 10. Now, it is Q1, though, so literally the top 10 doesn't even matter. We just need to get through into Q2, so above P15. But everyone now is going out for their second runs, and I suspect there's quite a few people that maybe could definitely go quicker that are below us right now, because it's weird to see myself and Drogovic in the top 10. And as we are through on the second flying lap, we haven't gained too much time in Sector 1. Perez goes quickest of all now. We've got the likes of Ricardo Vettel behind me, but I'm sure there's others, some big names below me that are going to improve on the exit of Magda Beckett. So it looks like we dropped a bit of time in the, in the first flying lap because we gained about three tenths on the exit alone. I think there's about two tenths in it between myself and Drogovic. So this would be crucial to try and match our teammate and try and get us up both into Q2. But we've made a massive mistake. And Sebastian Vettel has T-boned us. He's hit our sideboard. And Guan Yu Zhou has joined the party. Party. We've got a five plays grid penalty for causing a collision with Sebastian Vettel. I think a little bit harsh considering it was a mistake from me that spanned me and Vettel had nowhere to go. It happened so quickly for the German driver, uh, but we have been handed a penalty. So no matter where we qualify, we'll be five places back, but it could be low because so many people are improving, but Vettel and Guan Yu Zhou won't be one of them or two of them rather because they both crashed out of qualifying in Q1 and Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. He was knocked down Q1 last time out and he has to slow down because of the crash and that's going to hamper the Spaniard in the place where he won IRL. He's going to be knocked out in Q1 due to not getting the lap time in because of the accident I caused with that mistake. I was pushing hard, you know, we gained about three tenths. I was looking to maybe gain a couple of more tenths into the last bit of the, of the lap, but I don't know what went on there because if you re-watch that bit of the, of the lap, I was fine on throttle, like, like the car seemed pretty stable, and then it just snapped, just like that, like out of nowhere, I had no indication of it on the force feedback whatsoever that it was about to come, otherwise it would have reacted maybe a little bit quicker, um, so we've spun out of Q1, T-Bone Collision gets a five place penalty, and we're knocked out anyway in Q1, uh, Drogovic ironically does get through, maybe thanks to me basically, so Felipe can thank me that he's through to the second part of quality, but we finish up in P17 with a five place penalty, we're going to be towards the back of the grid so we may as well take some engine penalties and use this opportunity to get another row another column of uh, components for the engine just in case we don't see a patch come in uh, in season one for the quick practice wearing so we're going to do that going into the grid so unfortunately for the first time at Silverstone on this game we're starting on the back foot we are going to be at the back of the grid for my home race at the British Grand Prix I mean at least one thing is it can only go up from here that's all you can say. Fleet pace are into Q2. Let's go to the grid. Let's see how he does in Q2 and see how the rest of the grid shapes up. We return once again then to the home of British motorsport and the birthplace of the Formula One World Championship. It's race day here at Silverstone and it's time for the British Grand Prix. Straddling the border of Northamptonshire and Buckinghamshire, the 18 corners of Silverstone Circuit form the 3.6 mile beating heart of Formula One. It's been reinvented over the years with Turn One, now the fast right-hander of Abbey, but the magic of racing is as strong here as it's ever been. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Russell, Valtteri Bottas and Gasly, Magnussen, Norris, Fernando Alonso and Daniel Ricciardo, Leclerc, Ocon, Yuki Tsunoda and Albon, Drogovic, Joe, Sebastian Vettel and Mick Schumacher, Stroll, Sainz, the owner driver, they've taken a grid penalty, and Nicholas Latifi. And now it's time to head down to the track. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who is beside me in the commentary box today. Let's start with Alfa Romeo. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. So it looks like it's going to be the same exact front row as we had in Canada for this British Grand Prix. Verstappen from Hamilton, but only because Leclerc 
had an engine penalty. He was in P he starts P11 on the grid, and I'm assuming that's a 10 place penalty as we saw on the grid sequence. So in one way, you can say that's a really good bounce back from Ferrari and Leclerc, especially as an AI to get pole position, but then he's been dealt another blow with a penalty. And so it gives another chance for Verstappen and Hamilton to do well. Russell's in there as well on the second row. Don't carry him out, of course. Race winner at Baku and Leclerc. Well, from P11, surely you'd think he'd actually recover this time into proper point, unlike Canada, unless something goes wrong again. But it's damage, damage limitation for him because it'd be difficult for him to win the race or get onto the podium from there because everything's so competitive, it would seem, in the top 10. Remember, the Ferrari struggled to even overtake slower, quote-unquote, cars last time out of Canada. They struggled to overtake Williams' cars easily. So it's not going to be easy for Leclerc. For us, from last place on the grid, literally anything above this is going to be a positive for us after crashing out in quali. It's going to be a very tasty race, though, because rain is in the air. Rain is literally falling as we look to form the grid. But uh, my forecast said it was going to be all calm until the end of the race. So the forecast is incorrect. The rain is already falling, and it might be a bit of a damp surface circuit out there until we get to full inters conditions at the end of the race maybe potentially so that's going to be very interesting for 26 laps so as we get going to five red lights for our first ever british grand prix this could be a pretty damn tasty one lights out and away we go from the back of the grid and it is a bit of a slow start because the grip is not there it's already a bit damp as we dip a tire onto the grass and go around the outside and make it three wide between myself latifi and signs we're up into p20 as we look to squeeze stroll a bit but we get boxed in by the two Aston Martins. Have a look on the outside of Village now as Vettel and Stroll are busy squabbling. We're going to make it three wide with the two Aston Martins and because we're on the inside we'll be able to kind of sweep through and at least overtake one of the Astons. Stroll gets ahead of us though as he was right on the outside and got the better racing line but that's a pretty decent start. P19 you can see by the texture on the ground just ahead of us that the, the rain droplets are kind of you know settling a little bit on the circuit but it is nowhere near into Immediate right now. My forecast said it wouldn't be inters till the end of the race. So let's just kind of see how it goes lap after lap of how this rain kind of uh, treats the circuit. It's going to be a very confusing time, I think, with the rain already falling. But my engineer is telling me nothing about it being inters anytime soon. And you can see through Cop struggling for a bit of grip there on the exit with heavy fuel. And Vettel mugs us off as we're back down to P20. This may be a long Grand Prix ahead of us. To be fair, I'm still trying to settle in with this car around this circuit because I didn't get too much of a look in in qualifying because I only did one and a half laps and didn't get the opportunity to try the circuit out in Q2. And like I said, the circuit is quite damp. Snap of oversteer. You can see it's tricky out there for me, but also the AI. As we make a cheeky dive on the inside of Sebastian Vettel, caught unawares in the last chicane. Meanwhile, the Alfa Romeo of Gran Yu Zhou and the the Alpha Tauri side by side through that entire section, losing time to the cars ahead, and they're backing Lance Stroll into us as we start lap two into turn one, closing a bit. We're going to sense a bit of a move happening in the village. We go down the inside easy, does it? Roll the car through. Yuki locks up, and thank you very much. It's a triple overtake on the, the Alpha Tauri, Alpha Romeo, and Aston Martin. It was like taking candy from a baby. That was very, very simple in the end there. Let the car roll through. I wasn't sure where on earth. Grand New Joe was going, so I was a bit hesitant initially going into Village, then made the, tr the double overtake, and then whilst we did that, Sonoda locking up just allowed us to get the triple overtake done. Meanwhile, it's three wide between the two Aston Martins and Grand New Joe. That was wonderful into the Luffield section, but uh, Vettel couldn't quite hold it. He's been overtaken now by Latifi as he tries to make his way up the order. And meanwhile, Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. What is going on with the Spaniard? He's in last place. He's actually been overtaken by Latifi, that means at some point uh, in that lap whilst we were busy fighting looking ahead of us as now he looks to make a move on Vettel side by side through Maggins and Beckett's there so the German might be the last man on the circuit no Sainz still struggling there's got to be something wrong with that car there's something wrong with Sainz's car for sure as now Ocon locks up Ocon with a big mistake ahead of us and he nearly goes straight on he just manages to keep on going in P17 but we're into P15 uh, now and we're watching a uh, our teammate Felipe Drogovic 
fighting Mick Schumacher side by side through the final few corners here. If we're lucky, if we play our cards right, we can make another kind of, you know, double pass maybe somewhere. And we could be up into uh, P13 uh, and try and chase after then uh, the man we fought so hard in Baku, Alexander Albon. But right now, I'm just watching this fight between Drogovic and Schumacher with a bucket of popcorn. Drogovic trying to go around the outside. Schumacher, though, with a bit more with more pace. The Haas car is a much better car than our car. So I'm actually surprised that Drogovic is even attacking him like this. But go on, Felipe. Down the inside he goes. So Felipe showing us a bit of fight here in this British Grand Prix. We're going to try and join the party, but I don't want to kind of get in the middle and just push him aside. I want to give him a chance to overtake Schumacher in his own accord, but if he doesn't do it in, uh, in enough hurry, I will try and overtake him, but for now, we're sitting behind him, saving a bit of ERS and waiting for the right opportunity, but look ahead of uh, Schumacher. There's so much fighting going on, and now I sense this is the time to make the move on our teammate on the outside, up into P14. But look further up ahead of us there. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six cars maybe fighting. That involves Leclerc as well, who I just saw up the road overtake Daniel Ricciardo so like, that's what I meant by Leclerc finding it difficult to overtake cars even from P11 he's going to find it tough to recover majorly but now we're trying again at Village to make a triple overtake work we nearly made it three wide with Albon and Alonso but in the end of it we'll probably just try and finish off this move on Mick Schumacher Schumacher by the way you'll note he's on the soft compound tyre so he's risked it a little bit there but this may not end up being the correct way to go initially though we'll give him the grip and it's all kicking off as Drogovic is on my outside. Meanwhile, Albon and Alonso are still going at it ahead of us, but Drogovic has overtaken Schumacher and is on my inside now. We're going to be side by side on the exit. Will Felipe have the run to re-overtake me? My teammate is actually fighting me pro properly for the first time this season, but we will maintain trap position and we will stay ahead in P13 and we'll actually continue to look ahead of us because Alonso is being taken to the cleaners by Albon in the Williams. Alonso's been overtaken and now we sense a move maybe on the Alpine ourselves. DRS open, bit of ERS usage, but not too much. Don't want to overuse it in this early stage of the race, but DRS should be enough as we squeeze him to the inside and we'll take the kind of wider racing line and we'll be up into P12. Meanwhile Drogovic, he's really having to fight in the wars there with Sonoda. Gets overtaken. He's down to P15, so struggling now maybe for some grip. It's still raining out there by the way, very subtly, but it's still raining. You can tell by the, the textures on the circuit and also the kind of, you know, halo when you're on board with us. You can see the little streaks of uh, droplets of rain falling as Drogovic is really fighting Sonoda and trying to take back this P14, but the Japanese driver will have the measure of him into the next right-hander, but it's all kicking off there. Schumacher falling foul now of the Alfa Romeo. Meanwhile, back to our POV. We've closed up to Albon. We've had some fights with him in the past. Can we now have another one? And can we win this one out as we're down the inside now but he's got the better swooping line to carry the momentum through into the apex of the field. We're on the outside of the corner now just desperately trying to get the throttle down but opposite lock and we almost almost spin the car and make some contact with Albon as we have to go our opposite lock to maintain the car in a straight line. Now we continue on and we're going to make a exquisite move on the exit on the outside of Cops to get up into P11. That has been an action-packed first five laps of this Grand Prix. Wow, wow. We tried to go around the outside like Lando and Hamilton did in real life at Lefield. Didn't quite work there with the opposite lock drift, but we kept it going and we got the move done instead at Cops. And now we're in P11. There's a gap to Ricardo, who's P10. Leclerc, P9. So not much progress made. Norris, Magnussen, Bottas, Gasly up into P5. And then the top four is, well, a Red Bull sandwich with a filling being the Mercedes cars. The Stappen still leads the way then off his pole position. Hamilton, 1.7 behind so not as much pressure being applied to the Dutchman as was the case around Canada so maybe Verstappen has this under control and it's actually the Mercedes cars being under threat from Sergio Perez trying his best to make it a 1-2 for Red Bull. Later on then two laps later lap 7 and we have pulled away from Albon by two seconds and we've caught Ricardo, who was two seconds ahead of us when we first made the move on Albon. I don't know what's gone on with Ricardo. he seems quite slow especially versus Lando Norris who's still 
keeping Leclerc at bay a further five seconds off the road. So it looks like Ricardo is either finding these uh, slippery damp conditions difficult or he's got some sort of damage or issue with his car because uh, we're trying to fight him on the exit of the field. He blocks off the outside move there and forces me to try the right hand side. But I'm just biding my time right now because... This may be the last position we fight for, I don't know. So I'm thinking in the cockpit, do we try and stick behind and just stay in his DRS to save ERS and solidify this position and then get P10 later into the race? Because we've done so much fighting in the first five laps just to clamber up to this position. Now is a good time to save a bit of tire wear even and maybe just stick behind Ricardo and use him as a little bit of a DRS horse to my carriage. But by lap eight, I can see up the road we're losing time now to Leclerc. So Ricardo's actually slowing us down. So it's now actually time to kick into high gear and try and overtake the Aussie. It's very tricky out there, though. Even though we've had a stonking opening five laps, this entire time, though, I've had to be very wary of the throttle. But we're going to go right round the outside and try and emulate our fellow Brits, Lando Norris and Lewis Hamilton, like in real life. On the outside of Luffield there, we're going to squeeze Ricardo then into Cops to try and finish off the move. But the McLaren comes back. Here's superior downforce on the inside or unable to keep it through but we're still going to be side by side but into maggots and beckets we back out of it i could kind of see that just flashing before my eyes that was not going to end well if we kept our foot in so we're going to be patient and wait for this second bite of DRS here on the exit down towards Stowe. We're going to hopefully get the move. We'll squeeze Ricardo into the inside there. Break as late as we can. Get to the apex or try and get to the apex. We missed it a bit, but on the exit, we get the exit curve and we're in to P10. So we are back into our Mr. Consistent P10 position that we've had for the last uh, two races and now could be a third race here at our home race. I mean, from last place to P10 in about eight laps, I will take that. I, I will be honest, though, we've got very lucky with, you know, how much fighting there was in the first five laps. And everyone's just tripping over themselves. So, again, we've had a bit of an extraordinary race that's allowed us just to close up to people, even though we may not have the outright pace. And then with Ricardo, I don't know. I, 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 I've, I've had this thought a little bit on this game so far. It seems like when there's a slightly damp condition, I think the AI genuinely actually struggle now a bit in the game and the player has an advantage if you can dance the car around in slippery conditions you can actually gain a decent amount of time on these AI and I think that's how we've caught up to Ricardo you know he may have an issue I think I think he does and he's maybe just a lot slower than Lando's AI of course just like in real life because you know Lando's up there fighting with Leclerc and keeping him at bay but you know we did catch him very quickly and very surprisingly we pulled away from Albon so um, even I'm a bit baffled of how we've got up to this position but we're in it now and let's try and solidify it and whilst we were talking about the dynamics of our race further back on that same lap lap number nine behind Fernando Alonso in a similar fashion to Ocon locks up at Stowe and let's buy Drogovic and Sonoda so Drogovic up into P14 not doing too badly still holding his own and has a bit of pace there meanwhile Carlos Sainz still slow there's the lock up then as we watch a replay on board from uh, from Fernando and then also Sainz makes a mistake actually there sorry I missed that made a mistake and actually lost the position to Guan Yu Zhou. So Sainz really struggling. And now Leclerc's going uh, wide at Village. He locks up. So you can see this is what I mean. I think the theory is correct. The AI genuinely now act like players, like human beings. And they make mistakes in the wet. They make mistakes when it's damp conditions, tire wear. You can see the rear end wobbles a lot of the time now with the AI. And so finally, they're acting a little bit less like computers and a bit more like real people as we see Lando. Lando Norris and Leclerc going side by side. Leclerc re-overtakes the McLaren only after making that mistake at Village. And he goes wide again. And Lando now has a look around the outside. They're going to be side by side through the final two corners. Maybe no, Lando can't quite make it. But onto a new lap. Lap number 11. These two have been squabbling the entire race. And it's meant that Leclerc is still only 2.8 seconds behind P7 of Magnussen. Nowhere near the top four of Verstappen, Hamilton, Russell and Perez. And one other thing I want to know is look at the onboard of, uh, the, of the McLaren here and that Ferrari. You can see the rain droplets settling on the camera. I think on this year's game, there's a bit of a glitch right now that needs to be patched. That the uh, when it's raining, for whatever reason, for the player, the rain droplets aren't settling on the camera like it used to on all the previous F1 games. So it's very hard to tell how wet it is out there. I think that was an indicator from Lando and Leclerc's POV that is it's actually a lot wetter than it looks right now from my onboard this entire race and. 
And so that's making this drive ever the more impressive and playing into these mistakes with the AI because it really is that wet as Hamilton now is overtaken by Drogovic on the cold, hard tyres. He's made his first pit stop of the race. Uh, Verstappen was in as well. We've gone through for another lap. Drogovic has as well as both him and myself go on a bit further on the mediums and the, the, the hard tyres are so cold to heat up in these kind of damp conditions that Hamilton just got done by the Brazilian on the outside of village there. And seeing how Hamilton struggled there, that may just encourage me and Drogovic to go longer on the mediums to avoid the hard compound as much as we can as Perez now goes for a move on George Russell into Stowe just before the pit stops. Russell will stay ahead of Sergio Perez just before they both come in from first and second place there, but the Red Bull almost almost got George there and would have made it theoretically then a Red Bull 1-3 in the grand scheme of things. Norris in third place goes on by I'm sure he's going to pit, but we are not because this man Drogovic may be coming in this lap. I don't want to, you know, hinder him because he's actually doing really well. I don't know how. I don't know what's going on behind us, but he actually seems in a really good position. Not too far away from me, you know. So we continue on. Drogovic is in then. I kind of almost wish I could tell him to stay out with me because we're going to stay out and we're going to take the lead of the British Grand Prix. It may not be for too long, but right now we are officially leading our home race, our first ever British Grand Prix on this game. Verstappen follows by in second place. Russell has come out ahead of Hamilton. So that's how bad the tyre warm-up for the hard tyres was. Russell on worn, uh, worn mediums actually got out ahead of Hamilton, but now Hamilton has obviously the warmer hard compound now, and Russell, it's Russell's turn to struggle until he gets re-overtaken straight away but that is what I mean by avoiding the hard compound avoiding that kind of warm-up period maybe as long as we can because uh, it's pretty pretty damn horrendous out there but eventually obviously Hamilton's uh, warmer tires now um, uh, get ahead of him so it is gonna be Verstappen Hamilton Russell Perez on the road and uh, we still lead the race then but for not much longer with 10 laps to go Verstappen comes through but I think you can already maybe tell what my strategy here is so this is it unfortunately I could not in encourage Drogovic to do the same thing, but we've gone long enough on these mediums as Sainz is out of the race! Sainz is out! Oh, I told you he had an issue. I told you. There was no way he was actually that slow in this entire race the whole time. He was probably driving with an engine problem or engine wear, and it's finally come to rue as the Ferrari will park up on the left-hand side just before the Luffield section. That is annoying for Carlos Sainz. Two races in a row now where he's not scored points. But for us then, here's the strategy. We've gone one lap even longer. Lap 17. We're coming in now for this soft compound. We're going to turn back down the downforce. Because what I basically thought was, I thought the rain, proper rain, was coming. Because the weather forecast showed an icon for, for rain, an intermediate weather but it's not coming. I don't think it is. I think we're just going to have a slightly damp circuit this entire race. So in, I converted my strategy from going from medium to inters to medium to softs because I would have had to keep going on. If there is rain on the way, it's going to be too late. I can't carry on on mediums any longer than this. So you may as well now come in for the soft compound. Schumacher went, uh, went nine laps on his softs at the start of the race, so why can't I do that from lap 18 to lap 26 here? And we're going to come out in P10, so we've not lost any position. And now we're on a tyre compound that's two steps softer than the hard runners ahead of us. And look at Felipe Drogovic there, P11. He's not even doing that badly either. What a race is turning into for our entire team. And back at the sharp end, this is what we missed whilst we're watching ourselves come in for that pit stop. Lap 17 this was. Russell versus Perez. Perez trying so damn hard to get this overtake done and get up into uh, ahead of Russell what would be a podium position, remember? Because, you know, right now on that ladder I'm still in P2 because this is effectively a replay of what happened whilst we were, you know, going around in second place before the pit stop. Perez on the outside, DRS open, trying to go the long way round into the next left hander. And Russell, though, giving a good old fight. This is turning into a scrap and a half between the Brit and the Mexican. The Mercedes car just about can't hold it on any longer. And Perez will book himself up into what is effectively now third place. On lap 20 with six laps to go, 
we are flying and we are slowly gaining on Magnuson. Look at the grip difference we've got on these soft tyres as we just gain and gain time on the Dana ahead of us in the Haskar. So going along on the mediums has allowed us to now be punchy in this last stint and being two steps uh, softer on the compound is also helping us in these conditions because it's still very damp out there. Remember how the onboard looked of Lando and Leclerc. It's actually a lot wetter than it actually is on my on board because I'm pretty sure the rain is not displaying properly on the player's camera so far on this game and that means that with the softer tyre we're able just to pounce on Magnussen and try and get him and we've got so much better grip with the softer compound in these kind of damp conditions versus the hard tyre. I mean the hard tyre is horrendous enough let alone in cold damp conditions whereas this soft tyre it's warmed up quicker, it's gripping up quicker in these damp conditions and is giving us consistency to now will overtake the Haas to go from P10 to P9 and we're not done there. Norris and Bottas ahead of us, two seconds ahead. They're going to be catchable. We do catch them. Lap 23, they're going slow. That hard tyre is performing so badly in these conditions. Once again, though, for a third race, we've got extraordinary conditions. I mean, who would have thought a race like this where it's raining the whole race but it's not time for inters, it's just damp enough where the hard tyres aren't working very well, the AI are making mistakes, their rear ends are wobbling, they're locking up earlier in the race, and now we've done some amazing work by going long on the mediums, taking the pain at the end of the stint, and now we've got some joy on the soft compound as we now go for the move on our fellow Brit, the McLaren, into the left-hander. You saw his rear end was wobbling on the exit before that straight, and we've overtaken him even before Luffield, up into P8. And now, in the last few stages of this race, we can set our eyes on Valtteri Bottas. This would be for P7, and how fitting our lucky number, P7, my race number, number 7, in our first ever home Grand Prix. This would be quite something, and we can do it. We need to be, just be patient as we, oh my god, wrestle the car as we ne nearly spin it, just showing you how slippery it still is out there. Don't forget it, as we have another little snap of oversteer there. It may look like it's all easy going right now, but every single corner I'm having to be very careful and measured with when we apply the throttle, because it is still very damp out there. It's been a very odd race. It, uh, you know, it kind of gives me Brazil 2012 vibes. You know, it, it looks wet out there. It is wet out there. But the dry tyres are still the best tyre to be on. And like I said, it definitely is actually wetter than it looks for me. And we'll now open DRS with that, with the soft tyre advantage. And look to make a move on Bottas as we send it down the inside of Stow. It's going to be fine. Bottas has the better racing line. But we've just offset him and upset him a little bit enough to now make a final dive on the inside into the last chicane to get into P7 and on the exit Lando Norris will maybe try and fight Bottas a tad as we now go through onto the last lap of this Grand Prix and we are going to solidify P7 we'll pull away by a second to Bottas that's how much everyone is struggling out there in these damp conditions on the hards and that's why the soft tyre just works so well but look at that Leclerc eventually did come back to get P5 in this race so a good recovery but Max Verstappen wins his second ever race of this season Verstappen wins the British Grand Prix Hamilton gets on another podium second place there Perez in third after that overtake on George Russell it's a great recovery from Leclerc considering how tough his fight was with you know Lando earlier and how tough it has been to fight all these cars basically so he's limited the damage as much as he can but Verstappen, Hamilton, Russell they've all closed up for sure in the standings but for us it's gonna be lucky number seven in our first ever home Grand Prix what a British Grand Prix what a British Grand Prix Drogovic also was only P11 what could have been a bit more luck for him at the start of the race he could have been there in points with me bit of a shame but shows our car had genuine pace that race. Plenty of action then here in Silverstone. A memorable race and an impressive victory. Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. The 
the drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They've performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone of the team. Well, Verstappen will be pretty damn happy with that revenge for last episode of the Canadian Grand Prix. He wins this one in Hamilton's backyard and gets his second win only of the season. But that will go a long way to get him back into this championship fight. But Russell, you know, even though he did go overtaken by Perez, still another, you know, top position, Mr. Consistent in the game, just as he was in real life. And it means that he's going to be pretty damn close to Leclerc in the championship as well. Although Leclerc did well, though, limited damage only to two points basically that Russell is gaining on him if, if Leclerc uh, finished any lower then we might have Russell taking the lead of the championship but I believe Leclerc is still in the lead of this one um, after his dominant display in the first part of the season but uh, for us P7 like I said Drogovic P11 if Drogovic had a bit more luck and overtook a few more cars like I did in the first five laps with the pace he showed at the end of his medium tyre stint in clean air and then on the hards, like if also, like I said, if there was any way to tell my teammate to do the same strategy as me and also go on the softs, I guarantee he would have been in the points and he would have even maybe overtaken a couple of more cars in the top 10 for, for good points along with myself. But of course, there's no mechanic to tell the teammate that. So it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. He still had a very strong race, I feel. But Leclerc, there he is in the lead of the championship, but only seven points now to Verstappen. He's firmly back in the hunt and Russell is also level on points with him, seven behind. It is game on. And, you know, Sainz, 20 points behind. Hamilton, he's maybe an outside shout, but Sainz, he's had an unfortunate two races. If he bounces back, he could still be in there as well. But Leclerc versus Verstappen versus Russell, that could be very, very exciting for the next half of this season. But guys, if you have enjoyed this one, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. What a British Grand Prix that was for us. From last place to P7 in the weirdest conditions ever, but we made the most of it.